In a previous class, we started how to get a yield curve from the prices of zero coupon bonds. Today, we study how to get the yield curve from prices of coupon bonds. But before that, let me explain how coupon bond is different from discount bond. Suppose you own a discount bond, or also known as zero coupon bond, with face value one pound and time to maturity six years. So if you own this bond, after six years you will receive one pound. There is no intermediate payment. You have to wait until the maturity arrives to get any cash flow. In contrast, if you own a coupon bond, even if the face value and the time to maturity are the same, you will receive intermediate coupon payments. Suppose the coupon rate of the bond is 5%, and suppose the coupon payment is annual, so that the coupon is paid after every year. At the maturity, you will receive one pound, the face value, but in addition to that, you will receive 0.05 pounds after every year, 5% of the face value, which is 0.05 pounds. So you can see the distinction between the discount bond and coupon bond. Now we are ready to consider our original question of how to get the yield curve from coupon bond prices. As I explained, we already studied how to get the yield curve from zero coupon bond prices. We already studied that in a previous class. Suppose there are three discount bonds, bonds that pay you one pound in one year and in two years and in three years. Suppose their current prices are 98 pence and 96 pence and 94 pence respectively. Given the prices of discount bonds, we already know how to compute implied interest rates or yields of these discount bonds, zero coupon bonds. And that's how to get the yield curve. But what if there aren't zero coupon bonds in the market, but only coupon bonds? Indeed, in the real economy, you don't see many zero coupon bonds most of the bonds are coupon bonds. So you want to know how to get the yield curve from price data of coupon bonds. So how to do that? The answer to the question is that we can derive the theoretical prices of zero coupon bonds if we know the prices of coupon bonds. That is, we can answer the question, what would the prices of zero coupon bonds be, as long as we know the data of coupon bond prices. The main idea is that a coupon bond can be regarded as a basket of many, many discount bonds. So let me explain this idea starting in the next slide. Suppose there are three different coupon bonds currently available in the market. All of them have the same face value, 100 pounds, but they have different time to maturity and coupon rates. Bond A has time to maturity one year and the coupon rate is 1%. Suppose the current price of this bond is 99 pounds. Bond B the time to maturity is 2 years and the coupon rate is 3% and the current price is £102. Bond C has time to maturity 3 years and the coupon rate 2% and the current price is £100. Now, you should be able to tell how much cash you can get and when from each bond. If you own bond A, after one year, the maturity arrives and you will receive the face value 100 plus coupon, which is 1% of the 100 pounds. 
so the total of 101 pounds after one year. If you own bond B, after one year, you will receive coupon 3% of the 100 pounds, which is 3 pounds, and after two years, you will, you will receive 3 pounds plus the face value 100. With bond C, after one year, you will receive two pound coupon. After two years, you will receive another two pound coupon. And after three years, you will receive 100 plus two pounds. Okay, from this point is a little tricky part. These three bonds are all coupon bonds, about which we know everything. Their face value, their maturity, and their coupon rate. And their current market prices. But in addition to them, Consider the following zero coupon bonds that pay off one pound in one year, two years, and in three years respectively. Let's call them bond D1, D2, and D3. So these are all discount bonds, zero coupon bonds. And our assumption is that these three coupon bonds, A, B, C, are the only bonds that are currently available in the market and therefore, these discount bonds do not exist. Because they don't exist, we don't know their prices. But the point here is that even though they do not exist, their hypothetical prices can still be obtained from the information we know about these coupon bonds. So let's denote the hypothetical prices of these discount bonds by x1, x2, and x3. So our next goal is to find x1, x2, and x3. The main idea is as follows. You can think of these three coupon bonds as a bundle of these discount bonds. For example, if you own bond A, you will receive 101 pounds in one year, right? But you can get 101 pounds also by owning 101 units of bond D1. Similarly, the cash flow from bond B is replicated by owning 3 units of bond D1 and 103 units of bond D2. That way you will receive 3 pounds in 1 year and 103 pounds in 2 years. Finally, the cash flow from bond C is replicated by owning two units of bond D1, two units of bond D2, and 102 units of bond D3. Okay, let me summarize what we have seen so far. We have three coupon bonds. And apart from that, we can consider hypothetically three discount bonds, which we call D1, D2, and D3. The coupon bond A is regarded as a bundle of 101 units of bond D1. Bond B2 is regarded as a bundle of 3 units of bond D1 and 103 units of bond D2. Bond C is regarded as a bundle of two units of bond D1 and D2 and 102 units of D3. Now, let's denote the hypothetical prices of these three discount bonds by x1, x2, and x3. Then, we have the following three equations. Because buying 101 units of bond D1 is equivalent to buying bond A, 101 times X1 should be equal to 99 pounds, the price of bond A. Similarly, because buying 3 units of bond D1 and 103 units of bond D2 is the same as buying bond B, 3 times x1 plus 103 times x2 should be equal to the price of bond B, 102. And finally, 2 times x1 plus 2 times x2 plus 102 times x3 should be equal to 
the price of bond C, 100. As you can see, we've got the system of equations with three unknowns. If you don't know how to solve the system of equations, just find a good YouTube tutorial video for simultaneous equations. If you are familiar with matrix, you can also express these simultaneous equations in the form of matrix. Either way, if you solve it, you get solution x1 equal 0.98, x2 equal 0.96, and x3 equal 0.94. These are the hypothetical prices of these discount bonds implied by the prices of these three coupon bonds. Once these hypothetical discount bond prices are obtained, you already know how to get the yield curve from the discount bond prices. Let's quickly look at an exercise. Suppose that the following three coupon bonds are available in the market. The prices are for £100 face value. So there are three coupon bonds, their time to maturity is 1, 2 and 3 years respectively. Coupon rates are 5%, 6% and 10% and their current prices in the market are also available. Question 1. Find the theoretical prices of discount bonds that have maturities 1, 2, and 3 years, and find the prices for a face value 1 pound. Let's denote these discount bond prices by x1, x2, and x3. Then this is the system of equations you'll get. If you solve it, you'll get the hypothetical prices of the discount bonds. Okay, the discount bond that pays one pound after three years, for example, should be equal to 77.7 .7 pence. Of course, if you are familiar with the matrix, you can rewrite this system of equations in the matrix form, and after that, you can get the solution very easily using the inverse matrix function of Microsoft Excel. Question 2. What is the theoretical price of the following coupon bond with time to maturity 3 years and the coupon rate 7%? Let's consider this bond for £100 face value. If you have such coupon bond, after one year you will receive £7 after two years, you will receive another seven pounds, and after three years, you will receive 107 pounds. So the theoretical price of such a coupon bond should be equal to seven times x1 plus seven times x2 plus 107 times x3. If you compute it, you get 96.09 pounds. So that's the hypothetical price of this coupon bond. So the point is that once you get the hypothetical price of discount bonds, you can compute hypothetical price of any coupon bond.